this is Lady B. And at the beginning of this year, back in January, I took a virtual tour of London and I thoroughly enjoyed it. If you've never done it, I recommend it. It's so much fun. And as I was wandering around on Google Earth and checking things out, I stumbled across a place called Strawberry Hill House, which is this really old house, mansion really, in the Gothic style. It's just beautiful. And I spent hours looking at pictures of this place and wandering around virtually and, and thinking someday if I make it to London in myself in person, I am going to go and visit this place. Well, one of the things at the Strawberry Hill House is they have a cafe there and they offered some various tea offerings and things and they all looked so delicious. I did a little more research and I found the blog of somebody who visits this place who had made her own version of one of the cakes that they offer at the Strawberry Hill House and I thought this looked so delicious different. It was a uh, courgette and avocado, or for those of us who are not from England, a zucchini and avocado cake. And I just had to try this. So I'm afraid because of health issues, it's taken me until now, but I have finally, finally I'm going to make this cake and give it a try. So so the first thing the recipe calls for is to preheat the oven to 180 Celsius or 355 Fahrenheit um, and then to grease and line some cake pans. Here I'm using some springform cake pans. Once the pans are ready, your first step you're going to do to start with the actual cooking is to peel and grate the courgettes or zucchini. It's 300 grams or 10.5 ounces of zucchini. And you do this by peeling it, scooping out the inside, and then literally grating it with a grater. And once you've grated it, you then have to squeeze out the liquid. Now, the recipe didn't specify whether that weight is a dry weight or a wet weight. So I chose to go with the dry weight. So I took, put a bowl in front of me, squeezed out just by hand. I just picked up some of it and squeezed out as tight as I could. And then what you can't see here is there's a scale there and I'm placing it on the scale to weigh my dry weight. After that, I needed to get my oil. I started with my avocado, but I realized I had forgotten to melt my coconut oil. This is 75 milliliters or 2.6 ounces of a sunflower oil or a coconut oil, which I used, which meant I had to melt it. So I measured that out and then we just used a microwave to melt it. And then once it was melted, I returned back to my avocados. Now, the avocados is 75 grams or 2.6 ounces of a ripe avocado, which you can see me here putting that on a scale and making sure I have exactly the right amount. If at all possible, use a scale. I way, 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 way recommend using a scale. But once you have the correct amount, the avocado and the oil goes into... Uh, I prefer to use a food processor, but you can use a handheld mixer, but the food processor is so much more effective. Once you have that blended until it's smooth, then you're going to add into that sugar, uh, 175 grams or six ounces of sugar. You're going to add to the zest of two limes. My limes weren't zesting very well. They weren't as fresh as they needed to be. Uh, you need three eggs and which you just crack and you add in and then one teaspoon of vanilla. And all of this just goes into the food processor 
or if you're using a hand blender, the hand blender, and you just zip it up until it's nice and smooth. Okay, so here off screen, I apologize for it not being on screen, but what we're doing is we're weighing our flour. The amount of flour you need is 350 grams or 12.3 ounces of a gluten-free self-raising flour. Now, if you don't have self-raising flour, all you need to do is add half a tablespoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt for every cup of the, of the flour. To this, I also needed to add another teaspoon of baking powder, which gave me my total amount, which you can see here that I whisked together. At that point, I realized that the recipe didn't tell me when I was supposed to add my zucchini in. So I put my zucchini in the mix, the wet mixture and pulsed it. Once that's done, I poured my wet mixture into my dry. Now you're actually supposed to put the dry into the wet and that makes it easier for you to get a good mix, but I didn't want to dirty another bowl. So I just tried to be really, really careful and get every scrap and scrape every last bit off the bottom. I, I didn't quite manage it. I, I still had a little unmixed. So don't be lazy like I was. Use a second bowl. And then you put it into your pans. Now I'm using here another trick I picked up, which is I weigh my pans on a scale as I add my batter so that I know for sure that I have the same amount of batter by weight in both pans. It's really great, easy way to, to make sure it's the same. And then of course you smooth out the top before it goes into the oven. And then you set a timer for 25 minutes. While that's cooking, you need to make a simple syrup. Now a simple syrup is just equal parts of sugar and water. In this case, 125 milliliters or 4.3 ounces of sugar and water. And you just put it on the stove and you just heat it until it becomes clear and the sugar is completely dissolved. And then once that's done, you take it off the stove and you just let it cool down to room temperature before using it. Next, it was time to make the icing. Now, this recipe came with an avocado cream icing. So it called for 4.2 ounces of a vegan cream cheese. I'm using a chev, and you can see here how I have this again on a scale to make sure that everything is the correct weight. To that, I'm adding one ripe avocado, and I'm adding uh, 50 grams or 1.75 ounces of a dairy-free butter. And you just use a, I use a fork here. You can use a hand beater, beat it together until it's nice and smooth. And you'll know when you have it right because you can tell. And once it is, you put your sugar in and you beat that into. Now this is supposed to be a confectionery or icing sugar, 150 grams or 5.3 ounces. Once the icing's done, it is time to add an, your simple syrup to your cake. And you do this by taking a toothpick and poking your cake thoroughly and then pour, carefully pouring your simple syrup that has cooled to room temperature over the cake, and letting it soak into the cake through those holes. Once that's done, it's time to assemble the cake. I started, of course, by putting one layer of the icing in the very middle. It's awfully green, isn't it? I, the picture was white. I mean, perhaps it's because I didn't use a blender. But either way, once you have it in the middle, you then you need to put the next one on, the, ne uh, the next layer on, which of course means peeling off the parchment paper from the bottom, and then of course spreading the icing over the top, which in this case just meant putting it all on top and then just letting it spill over the sides. And the final topper is some pistachios. I have some already shelled pistachios. You can see my shells from where I shelled them that I've broken up in a pestle so I can sprinkle it over evenly over the top. And that is it. That's the cake. That's how you make it. Voila. And it's finished. 
Now, the picture in the blog, the icing was for her was white. Mine turned out very green. I don't know if it I did something wrong. Um, one of my layers did not perhaps rise as much as it should. This is the point where I have to be honest and say I'm not actually that great at making cakes. They always end up tasting well, but they don't always end up looking that great. So now it is time to taste this and see if it tastes as good as I think it would. And I'm just going to cut a wee slice out of this. And there's my slice. It does look pretty. Uh, it smells really good. So let's see how it turned out. Hmm. It's very sweet and very moist. And the pistachios on top add a nice contrast in the flavor and the crunch. Hmm. I'm not sure I would make this icing again, but I would definitely make this cake again. This is really good. Mmm. good mm. now if you're new here and you enjoyed this please like and subscribe if you're a return subscriber thank you for coming back so I just want to leave you new or old with this thought don't be afraid to try something new I mean what's the worst can happen you end up with an ugly cake that's delicious so whatever it is you do, just remember, suit yourself and make whatever it is you do exclusively you.